You've worked hard, the countdown is on, and results day is coming, whether you like it or not. So here is how to walk in prepared, empowered, and knowing exactly what to expect and deal with anything that results day has to throw at you. Hey everyone, and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. I'm Miss Estrick, and I've been teaching now for over 16 years, and I'm here to help make results day way less stressful for you. And if you're wondering what that is in the background, you might be able to see my cat. In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through what to expect, how how to prepare and what you can do if your results aren't what you were hoping or expecting. So grab a pen and this one's going to be full of lots of useful tips for you. Number one is know what the plan is on the day. Make sure that you do actually know what is the expectation of how you are collecting those results. Are you expected to go in and collect them? Are they going to be emailed? Are you going to be bringing any friends or family members with you? If you're actually away on holiday when they come out, have you got it arranged for how you're going to receive your results even though you're not there? Number two is packing a bag full of all the essentials the night before or the morning of. Now, when I say all the essentials, there's really not that much you need to take with you. But the key things that I would suggest, number one, a charged mobile phone. This might be in case you need to make any phone calls to celebrate or if you want to take pictures or possibly logging onto any online platforms to check things like grade boundaries, for example, to see how far you are off the next grade. Next on the list is photo ID and more importantly, maybe school ID. So do do you have a school lanyard, a school card that actually gets you access into the school? It's probably going to be open on results day anyway, but just in case, have any fobs and things like that that you might need to actually get access into your school. And then the final things you don't have to have, but you might want to have a pen and paper just to jot down any of the subjects that maybe you're close to the grey boundaries or to work it out. Obviously, if you've got your phone, you could do this in the notes section on your phone, but if you want pen and paper just so you can more visually see it and share it with a family member, then that could be helpful. Next on the list is going in mentally prepared for every outcome. I actually suggest that you have an honest chat with your parents, carers, family members who have an invested interest about all the possible outcomes and what that might mean for you. So if things don't go to plan on results day, at least you are mentally prepared and you've mentally prepared other people who it might be beneficial for you to have prepared as well. So the sorts of things to consider are, what are you going to do if the results did go amazingly and they did go to plan? And by what are you going to do? It might be that you then have to go and reconfirm your sixth form or college place and the subjects that you're taking. I know at my school, once you've got your results, you then have to join a long queue of all the other year 11 to reconfirm that you have got the grades and that you do want to stick to that particular course. Or it might just be you want to plan what you're going to do to celebrate. Then on the other side of things, what are you going to do if it doesn't go as you hoped or if maybe you didn't get the grades that you needed to get into your college or sixth form of choice or maybe you've still got into that school, that college, but not for one of the particular A-levels or courses that you applied for. So I'd say have a think about backup options before you go to results day. Do you have your backup college that you're going to get into if you don't get into your first choice? Have you got some ideas of backup A-levels that you wouldn't mind taking that you think you enjoy and you're also quite good at if you don't happen to get onto any of the A-level courses that you did really want to take? And linked to that, there's not just course changes. You might have a complete change of mind and decide, actually, A-levels aren't for me. I didn't enjoy the GCSE experience. I'm going to try something different like an apprenticeship. And of course, it is also the option to do research sits. And I'm going to come back to that a bit later on in the video. But for now, this is still focusing on go in, have immensely prepared yourself and others for all the possible outcomes. Because knowing all your possible options and outcomes and what you're going to do if those happen will massively reduce the panic and stress on results day if they do happen. Number four is managing those nerves. The night before results day can be so nerve wracking. And one of the best things you can do is just distract yourself. So the week leading up to results results day, the day of results day, try and keep as busy as possible. Pack in as many plans with family, friends, whatever it might be, just to distract yourself so you are not just constantly thinking about results day. And in particular in the evening, because it might be quite hard to sleep that night. So see if you can distract yourself so you're not just thinking about it. In particular, don't all get yourself hyped up, talking to each other, worrying about results day. Try and calm each other down, distract yourself. And remind yourself, your GCSE results do not define you. So let's get to results day itself. What to actually do on results day. Which by the way, I don't think I've actually confirmed with you the date, but it is Thursday the 21st of August 
2025. That is for GCSE results day. So you've got a couple of options. If you would prefer to arrive when there's no one else there, it's quite calm. That means that as soon as you're allowed to collect your results, you can get to the front of the queue, get your results and disappear. Then you need to get there a bit early. Whatever time you've been told to get in, get there a little bit early so you can get in front of the queue, get your results, disappear. If however, you prefer a bit of moral support from your friends and you want to be around the buzz and maybe either open it with your friends or be invisible in a crowd then you might want to get there when you've been told the time is that you can go or a little bit afterwards so there's already a buzz and a group of people around rather than a silent exam hall next to think about on results day is decide who you want to go with you you might want to go completely by yourself headphones in open it in privacy and then tell people when you're ready that is absolutely fine you might actually they want to take someone for moral support whether that is a friend or a family member but consider what you think you'll feel most comfortable doing and decide that in advance and arrange it in advance. There is no right or wrong answer, it's whatever you personally feel most comfortable with. And the next thing is please make sure you celebrate your efforts, not just numbers on a piece of paper. You have put in so much effort for your GCSEs and you've reached the end point of it and no matter what number you get, that is worth celebrating. So don't get too hung up on the actual score that you get. You made it to the finish line and that is what matters. Now I did say I was gonna come back to this idea of if the results weren't what you hoped, what can you do? Number one, do not panic. I promise you, you are not the first person this has happened to and you will not be the only person that it is happening to on that day. And there is always a way forwards. First thing I'd recommend is talk to someone when you're there. If you can find maybe one of your subject teachers, form tutors, head of year, who can maybe talk you through what your results mean a bit more and what your options are to help you to decide what the next steps could be. And that might be, can you appeal a grade? Can you still take the courses that you applied for? Are there any other similar courses that still fit your end goal of what you wanted to do as a career or that you enjoy? So consider resit or consider changing subjects could work. Or if your current school or college isn't letting you take a particular A level with the grades you've got, you might actually find another nearby college who will let you go there with the grades that you've got and for the course that you're interested in. So do a little bit of research and see what your options are. Now it is worth noting that if you did get lower than a four in maths or English, then it probably is a good idea to reset it because that could make things difficult in the future getting a job, depending on what sort of career you're going for though. But you can retake those two subjects in November. For other subjects, if you did want to retake them, you would have to wait until the next summer, 2026, when it's the new round of exams. You could also, as I said earlier, explore alternatives to A-levels. Not everyone needs to take A-levels. There's so many other options that might actually be way more suited to your skill set and that you would enjoy more. So look into BTECs. They have more coursework, but so much less pressure in terms of exams. T-levels, which have work placements. Apprenticeships, where you actually earn money while you're learning. And MVQs and vocational qualifications as well. There are loads of brilliant routes into university or careers that you might have your heart set on. And they all count, even if it wasn't what your first original plan was. Now, if you are moving on to A-levels, and in particular, A-level biology, hopefully you're gonna stick around because the main bio of videos on my channel is A-level biology content and I am going to be running a head start to A-level biology masterclass at the end of August. So on Tuesday the 27th of August at 10 a.m. I'm running a one hour masterclass going through a recap on some of the hardest topics from GCSE that you still need to know for A-level biology because let's face it you've now had the longest summer holiday of your life in which you were able to forget everything. So I'll help you remember what you need to know plus give you a a taster of some of the topics that you will likely be taught in your first week or two so when you start those lessons you're ahead of everyone else you will get the full hour live lesson plus the recording plus the resources that go with it and all of that for just 50p so for less than the price of a chocolate bar you can have one hour and resources that are going to help boost your first couple of weeks for a level biology if you do want to join just click the link in the description and i'll see you on thursday the 27th at 10 a.m 
a.m. So whatever happens on GCSE results day, remember you are not alone. There are people ready to help. There are options you might not have considered and there are so many ways that you can still reach your end goals. You've done something amazing just by getting to this point, so don't forget that. But that is it for my GCSE results video help video. Best of luck everyone and I'll see you in some more videos very soon.